Parental discretion is advised. What's up, guys? It's Sorgatron here in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, for Wrestling Mayhem Show 318. We're ready to roll, coming hot off the Pittsburgh Comic Con, talking with the fans out there, the wrestling fans. Not the wrestle fan, he's not here. He's sick because he was. He thought it was better to hang out with real people than us and to hang out while watching Raw last night, so that's what he gets. There you go. <laughs> so we'll see how Amateur Falling Down goes this week. Uh, with us, as usual, is Mr. DJ Lunchbox. What's up, hot dog? This is DJ Saucebox, and I am here. Good work. You've been on the internet all day, salivating, salivating like a dog who got smacked in the face with a steak, and then some fucking German scientist rang a bell. Well done. Well done. I know that analogy's been kicking around in your head all day. Good work. You've been just sitting, sitting, staring at your computer, staring at the dead feed on sorgatronmedia.com. You've been watching. You've been watching and waiting. You sat through awesome cast. Yeah. Now you're here. You're here for the best part of your day, the best part of my day, and the best part of anyone's lifetime. It is the one and only the finest podcast anywhere on the internet, the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Excellent. Also with us uh, from the other side of Pittsburgh is The Riz. Hey, everybody. I am back from my misadventures with at Comic-Con with Sorg and Lunchbox. And I got to meet so many people dressed up as the Joker, Catwoman, uh, Sorg. Lunchbox, Lady Lunchbox, but not Bobby F.J. Talon or Chachi. I don't know why, but now I'm right here on the Wrestling Mayhem show, mm -hmm. and I'm ready to talk about wrestling, and just like Hulk Hogan's porn pictures, you can hate me all I want. You're still going to look at me. <laughs> <laughs> also, you're on the couch eating a delicious Ooh. Reese's Con Conduct bar is Chachi of InsertCoinToBegin.com. How you doing, Chachi? That's right, ladies and gentlemen. It is I, Chachi, your mayhemy host of the year for this show and all shows that we do. I am a two-show award-winning host. You will Chachi. listen to the words that come out of my mouth hole each and every week. What was the other show? Run Song. I know. Tell them. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I know. Tell them. No, they don't care. <laughs> okay, it's nonprofit news. They want to listen to wrestling. They don't want to watch nonprofit. It crosses news. over. Um, oh, what in my mouth? All right. Also with us is the Bobogram. Coachella, Zorg, holla at these mayhemers. Oh, oh. Digitally, holler, okay. holler, wow. holler. Uh, yeah, yes, Bobby's a hologram. Oh. That's what oh, happens. Oh, That's what happens when I invite everybody to a pay per view on Sunday. Bobby becomes a hologram. <laughs> <laughs> also, we got people rolling in the uh, Google Hangout tonight. Hi, guys. Open in the deep. Baby. Baby. Good job. <laughs> there they are. There they are. We'll be popping with them here through the night. Uh, and if you want to hang out with us, uh, we are over on Google Plus. Look up the Wrestling Mayhem Show, the actual page page. I don't know if there's another little lingering one I made a while ago. Uh, but circle us on there. We'll circle you back. And that and when that happens, uh, you'll get the hangout way. invites every Tuesday night when we go live. 8.30 p.m. Eastern at live.sorgatronmedia.com for the rest of you that don't want to hang out there. You can hang out in the chat and watch the live stream and see what's going on and interact us through those methods uh like so many are like juggalo john chick chris and others um also hey check us out uh we have articles and everything over at wrestlingmayhemshow.com this episode and past episodes if you want to comment on them and share with your friends in video and audio forms i'm not there yet guys uh we're also on twitter at mayhem show like i said google plus we're on facebook we have a group open group on facebook uh, where a lot of us uh, discuss uh, wrestling news throughout the week. Uh, you can also drop us an email, too. Good times! Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. That was a little weak one, guys. Yeah, Come on, where are you guys at? I did it. I did Good it, too. Good times! You can also drop us a line to the Mayhem Show hotline at 412 That's 9670. If you want all this contact information, like Riz is holding up behind me there, you can, you can go download the iPhone app, WMS Gold, Wrestling Mayhem Show Gold. It's $1.99 on your uh, oh, iTunes store and your Android app store. Uh, I'm sorry, your Amazon app store. 
and uh, go check that out. It gives you uh, some extra content from before or after uh, recording the show that we don't put out there publicly. Uh, so you get a lot of you get a lot of extra stories and stuff, a lot of extra fun uh, and, and and a lot of singing for some reason. So so you know, go extra check that out. Fun. Rolling oh, that's a sticker on the back. We got I stickers see. on the back. And stickers on the back. We have stickers. We have stickers. Have stickers. You know, drop by the cons, get some stickers, and ask us, email us, and we'll uh, we'll send them out to you. We have we have plenty of stickers. Just uh, drop us a DM with your address and everything, and uh, and we'll do that. And we'll do that. Um, all right, guys, let's uh, get right to it. We have uh, some interactions with the fans here uh first of all uh chachi i think you had dibs i called dibs on this email <laughs> as soon as it came in i called dibs good for you here's a cookie there it is okay i'm gonna call him aj <laughs> well i mean this is what his email address is okay hey guys i started listening to you guys last week first off Good job. You're taking the right step in the right direction. Good for you. Welcome. Thank you. We love you. Thanks, bro. I love you, too. Not you. Shut up, Riz. You guys are very good. Keep up the good work. Except for Riz. Tell that guy he sucks. As announced Aww. last night, The Miz will face Santino for the U.S. title in a pre-show YouTube match. Is this an attempt? attempt to push the Rit Miz or give some credibility or is the WWE still burying the awesome one AJ Crescent PA I love that he gave his brief. name Very and brief. I love that he gave his name and place to find him if we disagreed with him I know um, <laughs> what was that question again uh, if this is an attempt to push the Miz or if the WWE is just going to keep burying him Bury him what do you think guys what do you think LB <laughs> Uh, the Miz will win the U.S. title. Is it the U.S. title? Whatever the fuck Santino has, he will win it um, because Santino will soon be tagging with Brodus Clay uh, with, with Hornswoggle as your new tag team champions. There you go. There Wait, you, go. you think it'll be Brodus Clay? Yeah, because he, he teamed with Ryder yeah. this week. He teamed with Zach Weren't they Ryder. friends at some point? Or didn't, wasn't there a one week where... Brodus Clay made the save on Santino. Or yeah, something. yeah, they did that a couple of weeks, and plus, if you if you watch Santino's exchange on YouTube, they've been doing a lot of stuff together there too. So, like before WrestleMania, so it's been building a little bit. I kind of hope they stick with that because I think that's a great team up there. I mean, it makes more sense than Zack Ryder in the long run. So, um, what do you think, Riz? Well, first off, he's an ass. <laughs> <laughs> Second of all, um, do you know this answer? guy? Yeah, I know the guy. Okay. Uh, second of all, uh, this is I, I don't I don't see the Miz winning this. Mm-hmm. I I don't. But uh, it is a YouTube pre-show match. Yeah, that's pretty much it. But I do see him coming back up up the ranks soon. Like not not in the near not in the future not in the near future just like right in the middle. I just see him like building up something. Guys, guys go cool off and stuff. I mean, that happens, right? I mean, a, I mean, a, and they'll come was, back. One year ago, he was the heel in the WWE, mm-hmm. and now he's pre-show. Yeah. So there, there got to be something coming up. At least he's doing something. At least he hasn't completely disappeared off the map, you know. So, uh, Hollow Bobby, what do you think? My how the mighty have fallen. Aww. That's all I gotta say about those two. Mm-hmm. Um. Santino was getting a really good push for like the longest time, and now he's on a YouTube pre-show. But he's still got a belt. And, yeah, he still and, has a belt. And, and if it's any, it, if does it's, the belt matter though? But it, if it's any consolation, like the match they had a tag match uh, before WrestleMania, that was good. Yeah. And and yeah. this too, I I think when you look at something like the like the Extreme Rules card, and we'll look at it a little bit more uh, later in the show. Uh, I, I'm thinking the show looks pretty strong up and down. They have a lot of good stuff going yeah. on. Whether it turns out to be up and down a good show i don't know uh but you know there's i think you're just running out of room now with everything combined you're running out of room for everybody it's going to be even harder for these guys to get up to the top tier like that you know yeah. so i think santino is going to retain anyways mm-hmm. uh, uh chachi did you did you respond no you, you want to respond no okay good enough <laughs> Good enough. Uh, not playing. Now, no, you take... I, I can't because it's going to lead into another tangent of me yelling because 
WWE buries yet another title on a fucking pre-show match. At least they're doing it, though. At least they're doing it. No, oh, fuck that. No, put a, put the women's match pre-show. That's true. Because they can't put on a match. No. Well, oh, they can't do it anymore. Well, yeah, they guess they can't do it. <laughs> Listen, no, no, because those fuckers need to be on the pay-per-view because the time is right. For my sweet giant chocolate bonbon to make her return <laughs> and claim what's rightfully hers. That's right, karma. Hey, well, especially, and they might fast track that now that Beth's out with the injury. So, uh, maybe not, though. Maybe not. Yeah, maybe not. There's yeah. rumors it was a work. Hmm. It was a damn good work if it was. It was a work. Yeah, because I mean, we we, yeah, we all she was saw really that. Good. I mean, the way the way her her leg hit, like you thought she saw something move, but they said it was like an ankle sprain. Mm-hmm. And it, yeah, that wasn't. That but it look looked like it, it was her knee popped. Yeah, from, she made it look good if it was. It, it did. She did an amazing job if that's the case. So, um, so you never know. Um, well, last week, of course, if you guys tuned in on uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show three seventeen, we had the Mayhemies. Uh, you know, uh, there were winners, there were losers, there was heartbreak. Uh, but we have a more extensive uh, response uh, from Bo. Diggity. Let's go to that right now. Hi, it's Bo Diggity, and I'm here to address the Wrestling Mayhem Show and the Wrestling Mayhem Show Nation. Nay, universe. I want to get some things off my chest. I was sensing, I, I felt it, I felt it through the air, I felt it in the, I felt it in the atmosphere. There was a lot of hate, a lot of hate and a lot of blood to people that I'm friends with. A lot of people that I know. You know, I, I, I have hate in my blood too sometimes. Right? Let me take you back. One year ago. We're back. One year ago. It's now 2011. I remember sitting here. In this very chair. In a different neighborhood. Because I've moved since, since then. When I heard Big Freaky. Big fucking Freaky. Wins Contributor of the Year. You kidding me? I'm not going to make an obvious Zack Ryder reference right here. I'm not going to do it. Are you kidding me? I have never once in the history of the Wrestling Mayhem show anyone ever say, Oh man, Big Freaky's talking. I've always heard, Oh no, Big Freaky's going to talk. Oh, make it stop, make it stop. (coughs) Make it stop. Never once have I heard happiness. Not the sheer joy that I bring. Not the sheer joy that Riz brings. But you know what? Neither one of us win Contributor of the Year. I'm still mad about that. Fuck you, Freaky. <coughs> oh, he's choking me. <coughs> I'm still alive, though. I came back stronger than ever. I came back. I came on the Wrestling Mayhem show and I laid it. I said, I'm going to be on the couch, I'm going to be on your video, I'm going to be on your audio, I'm going to be everywhere. And I was. And I brought the funny, I brought the factual, I brought the weird, I brought catchphrases that you didn't even know existed. Do you hear what Bo Diggity is saying? Got it. Got it. I think, is my my eyebrows up? Okay, good. So Riz, Bobby, Hot Wheels, you put up a hell of a fight, hell of a fight this year. Bo Diggity comes through with certain things that are just not quantifiable. I'm going to quantify some of them right now. I am 100% amazing, 75% awesome, 33% human. Put that together, that's 220%. Of a person. It's tough. It's tough to run against 220% of a human. It really is. You can't. I don't bring 110%. I bring 220%. See my man over here on the couch? Yeah, go ahead. He's that way. Guaranteed. That's my man Chachi. Chachi's awesome as well. That's why we combined forces. Combined them. And we said, we're taking this. No hate, no negativity, just 100% amazing. 
boom, combined. And what did we do? Took that crap on home. Chachi host of the year. Bo Diggity supporting co-host of the year. All the way to 2050, baby. And then after that, we'll need to have some discussions and negotiations as to how far we want to take this in the future. Because at some point, we got to let somebody else win. I guess. Maybe. So, enjoy it. Wow. Way to bring it down. I didn't know AJ was up for Contributor of the Year last year. I guess. I, I don't know. I we'll thought, have to look at the records. I under the new, new host of the year. And I won that. I, I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> I think AJ should win Contributor of the Year next year based solely that. off of that promo. <laughs> <laughs> Just because he ripped in the big freaky. That's, that's, that's all we need. Well, yeah. I mean, that alone makes him a winner. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And like I said, in three months, Freaky's going to watch, listen to this podcast and say, <laughs> <laughs> while driving 95 miles per hour on yeah. the road. Yeah. Somewhere. Somewhere. Where he's going to he's gonna be like, so Lunchbox called me out in a video. And we'll be like, no, it wasn't fucking Lunchbox. <laughs> Learn the names. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Again, you guys, hey, drop us a line there. Good times at wrestlingmayhemshow dot com. Uh, anything like that, we'll take video submissions like that too. You just got to put put on YouTube and send us a link. That's how Mike does it every week. So uh, please do that. All right, guys. Uh, Wrestle fan is not here. Wait, can I cover the in a minute? If you want to, sure. It's in the doc. Can I get time? You can. Oh, oh, it's in the notes. Shit. It is in the notes. Uh, I, was gonna do my version, by the way. I, I think Riz was going to do this is amateur falling down see you next week <sighs> stuff happened <laughs> moving on um, no okay so so I'll, I'll do it if you if you want sure go ahead okay I don't know anything about this stuff uh, first of all the big news uh, over on Jakara Pro uh, they did announce uh, King of Trios they are actually moving it to September uh, I know it's usually around this time of year but of course I think that got uh, mixed up a little bit thanks to the closing of uh, ACW Arena uh, this year they're going to be September we have the doc September 14th, 15th, and 16th if you're interested in that uh, there was no location announced as of me looking at it yesterday I think uh, but I'll double check that now uh, yeah, they just have the dates up. They don't have a location. This event is typically held in Philadelphia, but uh, lately uh, Chikara has been expanding a bit out. Uh, they've been doing, uh, uh, the course, new shows in uh, New York, up uh, in Ontario. Uh, uh, as, far, as far as Wisconsin, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, they're going out to on August 17th. Uh, Massachusetts, so they're getting around. They're really turning into a, a wider promotion. I, I really kind of attribute them and, and help me launch this because I think you've uh, followed them a bit more from back in the day. They really seem like they're about the size of what Ring of Honor was doing maybe about mm, seven years ago, back when like Samoa Joe Punk days. That is, is that, accurate. Uh, so, I mean, they're getting big. Plus, they are doing starting to do the IP review thing um, and and they're they're actually crossing over a little bit with Ring of Honor. I think Partly on their TV. I need to get caught up with their TV over on Ring of Honor. I hear it's been really good lately. So go check out more information about that. ChikaraPro.com um, Also noted, thanks to WrestleFan, is uh, Inspire Wrestling is a new Texas wrestling federation uh, coming out in August. Um, uh, one of the big things out of this, and it, all he has for me here is a, a Facebook page. I haven't got a chance to look at this too much here, uh, but go check that out. Uh, but one of the big things, uh, one of the big matches he's excited for, of course, he's a fan of uh, ACH, which he knows from, I believe, River City Wrestling. Yeah, I hope I'm not mixing that up. If not, that is Anarchy, but I think it's River City. Um, is that the one with the picture? Yes. Okay. Right. Uh, but ACH is uh, wrestling uh, Lewis Linden, who we know up here a little bit from the uh, from the uh, uh, AIW. He's been down here in in uh, uh, I, IWC uh, as part of Aeroform. Uh, so that that's actually a match that'd be pretty good. Um, let's see, the return of Southern Excellence. It, 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 this is interesting because it is Inspire Wrestling Episode One. So uh, I'm wondering what the concept's going to be there. Um, also, uh, we don't have a, a anybody in person, or there's not much 
uh, but a video, and I'll pull this up here. Uh, Bobby, do you have a little bit more information about uh, your rebirth, your rebirth fed over in uh, Johnstown? Um, I didn't get to attend the show because I had family in over the weekend, um, but I heard it was a really good show. Um, a lot of good matches, uh, superstars that haven't been in in Johnstown before. Um, I, I, I just heard it was a really good show, and I know they're going to be wrestling at uh, Sci-Fi in the Valley. Mm-hmm. Uh, May 18th, 19th, and 20th. Not sure what times and days, but they'll be at that show. Okay, okay. And they are uh, Phoenix Re- Pro Wrestling. Phoenix, Phoenix Pro Wrestling is the, is name the official of name of it now. Now, these are the guys, and, and I know we talked about, I don't know how much we showed on the show, but they were doing these promos. I, I, I get, My heart goes out to them because what they lack in video production, they gain in creativity. Uh, there was really set up as they were inviting people like it was to a Street Fighter tournament. Uh, also really excited from uh, looking through this highlight video they have here, uh, that Blue Collar uh, Slaughterhouse from IWC uh, were involved. Uh, Mankind came back at this in this one. Or not Mankind, I'm sorry, Manchild. Manchild. <laughs> Mankind, oh my god! How did they get that <laughs> guy? They got Mick Foley. <laughs> but, uh, so I, I'm interested to see what they're doing. It sounds like the sci-fi in the valley stuff is going to be fun, because I think you said they're going to dress up as superheroes or something? I- I think that's what's supposed to happen. So, I mean, that, that'll that be that, fun. So I'm, I'm hoping to get something worked out that we have a presence out there and hopefully catch a little bit of that. Uh, and that's, uh, the would you say, 17th, 18th, and 19th out in Johnstown. 18, well, it's 19, actually not in Johnstown. 20th. Edinsburg? Edinsburg, yeah. Edinsburg. So it, it's out there if you're uh, – it's probably about an hour and a half drive if you're in the Pittsburgh area. Uh, but it's, it should be lots of fun if you're if you're around for that. Um, also, this past weekend, uh, Re- Renegade Wrestling Alliance (RWA) we were out filming there. Uh, pretty good show there. Um, so go check that out. Be on the Kato! 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 <laughs> and you'll get an ad for that here uh, after the indie uh, minute, which is ending now. Unless anybody else has anything. And no. so Great any minute, guys. <laughs> great any minute. Yeah. We can do this out, Wrestle <laughs> fan. Hey, we got this. So hey, we got Sorg. this locked down. Good well, job, Sorg. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Good job. That's good for talking about feds I didn't have any information on before five minutes. I, I didn't do a good job. No, Bobby, Bobby, no, Bobby. You assisted greatly. Here, high five. Digital high five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't actually touch you because I'll go through the Mylar screen. Um, anyways. And you'll go through me because I'm a hologram. Yes. That's <laughs> that. That's what the reference was for. All right, guys. Uh, no like, hologram, girl. You, we're going to take a look a little bit at what's going on in gold, uh, you know, so you can buy that app and everything, and uh, a look at uh, RWA Spring Pl- Spring Spring Fling Four <laughs> coming out on DVD now available, and we'll be right back with Remember When and all the rest of the Mayhem Show. See ya. I admired them from afar. <laughs> That's stalking. <laughs> You were aggressively Fez. Yeah, it's an indie game that just came out in uh, for Xbox Live, Xbox Live, um, whatever the fuck they're calling it nowadays. Yeah, it's tremendous. It's super fun and really. Lunchbox, you didn't win a Mayhemmy. I know. True. We didn't take him to lunchtime. I didn't either. Sorg, you didn't win a Mayhemmy. All right. I was honored. Get drunk. Get drunk. What's up, hot dog? This is DJ Lunchbox, and you have made it back for the second half of the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Good work. I'm so proud of you. You've done really, really well. We're almost at the end. And always in the middle of the Wrestling Mayhem Show comes everybody's favorite segment. Remember when? Blech. Um... My remember when this uh, this week. Uh, it's it's no secret to you, longtime listeners of the show. I am a fan of ECW, original hardcore Philadelphia ECW. The only good thing to come out of Philadelphia uh, is Extreme Championship Wrestling. 
Fuck the and fire. one of the most insane matches I've ever seen. I list it right up there with uh, Cactus Jack's Japanese fucking exploding ring matches. And I list it up there with uh, when Balls Mahoney fought that other guy with glass taped to his fists. <laughs> Why not? I put it up there with that. Born to be wired. Uh, Sabu versus Terry Funk in one of the most ridiculous fucking things I've seen in my life. It kind of like summed up essentially what ECW was about at the time. Um, as uh, Sorg is showing there on the screen in the video, instead of ropes, they had barbed wire. Um, it was absolutely, completely ridiculous. Obviously, both men were just torn open. Um, and it got to the point where it was so insane where it was like they would – do a series of moves and then lay on the ground in agony and then do some more moves and lay on the ground in agony uh, because the barbed wire would, of course, uh, come into play in in every single maneuver. Um, there was a couple of times where, like, Sabu would go to bounce off the ropes and he would be like, oh, God, and stop himself and all that. Um, there was actually uh, one moment in particular that just goes to show how insane Sabu and Terry Funk, for that matter, are. Um, Sabu was doing his uh, his corner splash on Terry Funk. Terry moved, and uh, Sabu landed in the barbed wire and tore open his biceps. Fuck. Insane, all the way down to the muscle, and disgusting. What did he do? He finished the match. He went outside of the ring, grabbed Bill Alfonso by his crazy little rat face and said, get me some electrical tape. And he did. He taped up a 10-inch gash on his arm with electrical tape and went back in to finish the match. The finish of the match, incidentally, uh, I don't think anybody actually won. Um, it's very hard to keep the ropes keep the barbed wire in that rope configuration so they kept falling down and stuff they got tangled up in the in the barbed wire so the end of the match is essentially sabu and terry funk laying uh next to each other fucking cocooned in barbed wire while every single ecw official and excuse me a lot of the wrestlers came out and had to cut them out with wire cutters. It was absolutely insane. I, I haven't, I've never seen anything like it since. Uh, and if you're a fan of that kind of wrestling, extreme, hardcore, violent ass wrestling, uh, it was brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. And that my friends is, uh, the journey that I would like to take you on. Take some time, go and watch it, find it. It is on EC or the WWE's, uh, Blood Sport DVD, the ECW's most violent matches. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely tremendous. Go it, and check it out. You know, and, and again, you, we'll talk about a little bit of Pittsburgh Comic Con. It was amazing how many people are like, I remember going to ECW down at like Ross River Ice Gardens or wherever it was held locally and, and seeing that. And they, they considered that, you know, real wrestling. You know, where the real shit, you know, the real shit happened, you know, or where, where they use the barbed wires, where they use all that stuff in people's blood. <laughs> you know, it, it's really interesting to see people's um, general kind of relationship to that, you know. Um, so and, and it's a memorable thing. You don't see something like that and come out the other side not changed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's just how it is. And you still see that there's still people there's still feds out there doing this. But I think it's lessened a lot in the last few years. I think people are more concerned about safety. I think something like this, because for the longest time you had stuff like XPW after ECW went under, and you had CZW did insane stuff, and they still do to a point. Still do, yeah. Um, bed of pencils. I just want to mention bed that. Of bed of pencils. I remember Man Man Pondo talking about having to pull his pull a pencil out of his ass the next day after dropping on a bed of pen pencils. Um, I mean, in, in this kind of stuff, you know, when you look at it, I mean, this isn't, you know, we, we like to appreciate, I, I hope on this show, like, you know, good matches and everything. It's not this, you know, just Terry Funk and, and, and Sabu going crazy and, and, and barbed wiring each other and, and risking their lives. Cause I remember at one point, I think this is the match. There was, you mentioned they were, they were so tied up. I remember there was like barbed wire just about around Funk's neck. Mm -hmm. And he had to hold on to it because otherwise it would have probably cut into his neck in a very yeah, bad pretty, place. Mm -hmm. I mean, it much. was just incredibly rough to watch. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and I, I don't think I had gotten a, see, a chance to see the whole thing like that until that Bloodsport DVD, which I've definitely picked up. And I, I enjoy 
picking up a lot of those ECW DVDs that WWE's done since. Um, so, because at least they acknowledge this kind of stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. But they're, they're still like, great, you guys can go enjoy the stuff that happened because we're not making much more of this, you know. Yeah. But at least it's a special occasion when it does happen. So, like, hopefully we'll see, you know, coming up at Extreme Rolls here Sunday. So, uh, with that, uh, let's go see what Mad Mike's got to talk about on uh, his Minute of Mayhem, and we'll be right back. Greetings, Wrestling Mayhem Show. It's Mad Mike here once again with your Minute of Mayhem. Now, I haven't been able to listen to the Mayhemies yet. Uh, there's been a problem with my iPod. I haven't been able to update my podcast or anything like that. But um, I do want to rescind what I said on Twitter. A few weeks ago, I said that the support of Vimmel was more worthy than a Mayhemie, and I stand by that. So I want to formally congratulate Chachi on winning the Host of the Year Mayhemi. And, you know, I was just watching Raw. And Brock Lesnar, to me, I'm not excited for him. I'm not excited for his return. It, it's kind of similar to how I felt about The Rock. Because I was, I was watching last night during my lunch break the Rock documentary that's, out, that's now on Netflix. And it reminded me of how awesome The Rock was and how much of a fan I was of him back then. But it seems when he came back, he just didn't have that that zing he just didn't have it at least not to me didn't seem like it same thing with Brock Lesnar I mean I was a huge Brock Lesnar fan when he first came in but the last time I saw him live was Wrestlemania 20 and you guys there remember when a couple weeks ago that match was horrible you could tell Brock Lesnar didn't want to do this anymore and to me, it it still does not seem like he wants to do this. It seems like this is kind of just because of him having diverticulitis, him having to leave UFC because of that injury, because he couldn't stand being in real fights anymore. He had to go back to orc fights where people won't punch him in the liver. But I thought the best part of last week's show on, on Raw... Um, the CM Punk thing, very funny. They're pushing the boundaries a little bit, and I like that, but to me, Edge coming back and giving that speech, that was pretty great. Because Edge... Edge is a guy who hasn't lost it, even though he's been gone a year. He came in, he delivered an impassionate speech. I still don't know if Cena's going to win. I don't think he is. I really don't think he is, even despite the ridiculous demands that Lesnar made that you could hear through his high-pitched voice. But I think this is the beginning of a losing streak for Cena. I mean, he lost to Albert, for Christ's sake. I mean, granted, he's Lord Tensai now, but he lost to Albert. But anyway, um, yeah, so I'm not really that excited about Brock Lesnar's return, but the Punk Jericho thing is good, and even Daniel Bryan and Sheamus should be a fun match. It looks like they're actually going to get two out of three falls, which will be nice as long as that doesn't go, you know, 18 seconds each fall. I also kind of hope that AJ and Brian have had sort of a scheme this whole time where she's going to be not Miss Elizabeth, but Sensational Sherry. And I think I, I think I would love to see AJ help Brian to win and then Brian lifts her on her shoulder while she holds the belt and he screams yes. I think that would be amazing. Well, this is Mad Mike for your Minute of Mayhem. Take care. Spike your hair, bitches. Woo woo woo. You know it. This week uh, after the show, I sent out tweets saying that I was the uh, host of the year. And he kept set responding with like stupid ass comments saying that no, he was the host of the year. And he was just going to fight it. That's why he apologized and I took see. back the comments okay. Okay. and can i point out that last night brock lesnar shouldn't be allowed to hold a microphone ever no i yeah that was because he kept saying that until these demands are made yeah it should have been met yeah 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 and well he kept saying I'm like feeling I'm, over and over again yeah too. i'm like you're making the 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 demands now, so... Yeah, you know, remember he had Paul Heyman when he was <laughs> when he was uh, big in WWE before. I don't remember much him 
talking. He didn't have to. He had a microphone. I, what? Two letters. I did. A-W. What? Two letters. A-W. A-W? A-W? Abraham Washington. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I, I kind of uh, like the idea of uh, what nope. might be happening there. Nope. He's tied up with the Mexicans. <laughs> no, he was looking at uh, Mark Henry as well. Mark Henry's Mexican. Oh. He's going to make the multicultural that? force. <laughs> mm. The multicultural pals. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Henry's go. not Mexican. There you go. Sure he is. Mark Henry's Mexican. Multicultural. <clears throat> um, we are the world. No, I'm not game anymore. No? I did. I, I absolutely loved uh, Josh Matthews being like, just trying to do my job. <laughs> <laughs> and, get, and he gets his face shoved through. Yeah, and we all Deal. think that every time like some dickhole wrestler beats up one of the announcers, we're like, geez, man, he's just trying to do his job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Josh Matthews for president. There you go. There you go. Uh, I kind of like his. Be, it might be a, a over overreaction, but <laughs> I kind of like his idea about uh, Daniel Bryan and AJ about yeah. the Macho Man thing. So, just putting that down there. Uh, yes, I agree with him. I agree with him. And, and speaking of uh, Daniel Bryan, this was posted uh, on the Facebook. Yes. By, by, yes. By the Riz. Yes. Do you want to explain where this came from, Riz? It came from PETA's Twitter account. Go Vegan, yes, has a cow wearing a Daniel Bryan signed t shirt, it looks like. Mm-hmm. I think he is legitimately a member he of is PETA. A, he is a vegan. Oh, if that's PETA, he then. He's a vegan. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Okay, PETA, no. PETA no. approval no. side, but, uh, but I, I think he's a member, though, isn't he? I think he was like vegan of the year or, so, or month yeah. or something like that. Yeah, yeah, vegan, vegan of, the month. of the year. I think that's vegan what it was. Vegan of the month club. Yes. Um, I level five vegan. Only th- <laughs> I don't even eat things that catch the shadow. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's from Simpsons. Like, didn't they support him when he was suspended? I think so. I think there was some story that Peter was supporting Daniel Bryan in this. Hmm. We are the world. Well, um... What? <laughs> what? Uh, what? Oh. Peter has in other herpes. News, in other news, uh, Tough Enough winner Andy Levine. Levine? Levine? What was it? Who cares? He uh, was released from WWE. Who cares? <laughs> Nobody knows who that is. And, nope. He won Tough Enough. Silent Tears. He's the Silent Fury. He won, he won what did he win? Rage. Silent Rage. Tough Enough? That show Silent with uh, Stone Cold Wait, hold on. Year? Wait, hold on. Stop. What's Tough Enough? Mm. A show that happened. No, yeah. it didn't. It made Lunchbox, happen. have you ever heard of this show? I, I have no clue where you're t- Tough Enough. I mean, didn't... Uh... Wasn't that an end? Didn't Maven? Maven won that. <laughs> Who's this Andy Levine Joker? <laughs> Isn't he that guy that go. sings like, "What do you want from me? What? What do you want from me?" Isn't that no, that that's guy? Adam. I don't think that's right. That's Adam, Adam Levine. Levine. Adam that's Levine. not even Adam Levine. I'd rather, fuck, I'd rather watch him than this. <laughs> Wang. Uh, who who yeah. said he won tough enough when clearly what? it was Maven? <laughs> Drop kick hero Maven. Yeah, it, 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 it was one of those. Been, hey, Turn over the top rope yet? Home shopping hero. So, so once again, uh, it, it's the people that don't win that that make it. You know, uh, much like the Miz, much like you know, so many others. You know. Who's making it from the previous one though? My guess, Rima Faki. Yeah, Rima. <laughs> well, there was word going around about her maybe oh, being besides, still signed. Uh, I think the Fuckasaurus yeah. check. Yeah, fun- Fuckasaurus chick. Fuckasaurus. Uh, oh, yeah, he said yeah. Fuckasaurus. I heard Riz <laughs> say Fuckasaurus, and that's his name from now on, period. <laughs> he is the Fuckasaurus. Uh, yeah. The only living okay. Fuckasaurus in captivity. No. Don't call his mama. Don't call his mama. By the way, if I ever have to look at Hornswoggle's naked, freaky, little, tiny sausage legs again, I'm turning off my television. <laughs> that was unfortunate. That was, that was unfortunate. <laughs> That's a very nice way to put it. <laughs> I think we call it what? Chicken legs or chicken wings or something like that. Those are the fattiest, worst tasting chicken legs ever. <laughs> wow. Wow. Um, LB, LB, you uh, you sent something along for a uh, movie uh, that was that was uh, actually reviewed by Robert e- Ebert. Uh, Fake It So Real. Yeah. No, I sent uh, what I sent was a tweet. I didn't actually read that article, so 
<laughs> I don't remember anything about it. I probably just sent it uh, in between bouts of not doing work at work. Oh, okay. I've been to the bottom of the ladder. I've been to the top well, of the ladder. It looks like it uh, follows uh, in- indie promotion MF or M- MWF. Uh, and yeah, it was very well reviewed by uh, by by Ebert and. Uh, it, it, you know, this is this is this is you know we've seen a lot of these uh, indie documentaries, seen what it's like out there. And there's a little bit of preview for you guys on video. It's bad kids. What's that? Smoking bad. Smoking's bad, kids. <laughs> but but since LB didn't read the article, uh, I Sorry. have nowhere to follow on because he was the one that submitted it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but another one coming out. It's won awards uh, from a bunch of uh, film festivals I've never heard of. Um, so uh, check out more about it at Coachella. FakeItSoReal.com. Um, and uh, we'll be looking for that. We, we always like this. I mean, remember we had the uh, card subject to change. Somebody brought that up to me this weekend. Really good documentary. Had Kevin Sullivan and a bunch of guys on there. Uh, Trent Acid before he died. Um, you know, of course, the good old Between the Rows, which really kind of started this whole thing off, I think. Um, and I think more people are interested thanks to stuff. Dennis like Stamp is still not booked. Who? Dennis Stamp. Dennis Stamp. Yep. From. From Beyond the Mat. Beyond the Mat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, did I say Between Robes? That's something else. Between. I'm sorry. Yeah. Wait. Yeah. Man, I even own that man. I don't even know. Any um, the yeah. Uh, but you know. Uh, you actually had a uh, you know speaking of the, the con, I actually had somebody like see Necro Butchie on the cover. Is like, isn't that the guy from the wrestler? <laughs> it's like, yes, yes, that's the guy. So, and I think that has a lot to do with all these documentaries coming out too. Because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it it was the most the, the wrestler was a real kind of real look. A little exaggerated, or not really, really exaggerated. Not horribly, no. Not not horribly exaggerated, but it's it's a good look into indie wrestling. Mm-hmm. Even though it follows a big wrestler who's now not really that big, mm-hmm. it still follows him. So they they're trying to get that feel back, yeah. and trying to you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, and, and people are more interested and want to know more. I mean, I mean, uh, for the longest time, the Indies were like, uh, you know, I remember sitting at shows and, and like where Samoa Joe was there and people like the guys behind me were like, oh, Samoa Joe, he's fallen so far from when I remember he was on TNA. It's like the guy's still on TNA. He has a belt, you know, this is just what mm-hmm. they do. The Indies aren't like as much of a downturn anymore. It's where the stars are coming up. And, and or trying to make it, you know, it depends on the group, of course, you know, it depends on who's who's promoting it and, and everything. So um, but but I, there's there's more of an interest in there. and People actually seen it as maybe an alternative or something different. So, I mean, that that's why we go out and we're trying, you know, to these cons or we're trying to promote these DVDs and and let them know, like, you know, especially here in these Pittsburgh cons, that there's something in their backyard because, you know, otherwise I don't think they know this, you know. Um, you know, even though there was a, there were a lot of IWC and, and RWA or, or, or people from RWA and IWC that they haven't actually gone to those shows. Uh, I, I was surprised how many people were actually came by and said, I've been to that show and that show and oh, I need to get this DVD, you know? Um, so, I mean, they're out there, you know, you, you know, I think, I think we did a good job going to the con and, and finding those people and having those conversations. So. Uh, Riz, Riz, Bobby, and LB, you were at the con as well this weekend. Mm-hmm. And now LB, actually, I think all of you had a moment at the booth, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know, it's a long weekend. Uh, what, what, did you guys have any experiences from the weekend that surprised you uh, uh, with all the wrestling fans coming by? Mm, like, I, okay, I'll start. Hmm? Um, but I, it was me and Missy sitting there, and then all of a sudden this one guy came up who was a a wrestler. Mm-hmm. We didn't know who he was. Was was but, it was it uh oh I can't remember his name now. From sexual Jay harassment. Brimstone? JT Rogers? I do not know. He never said his name. <laughs> <laughs> oh he did oh he, he 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 knew IWC and he knew R R W A. Okay. And he so he, he was he was very well informed of the indie scene in Pittsburgh and the, the surrounding area. Okay. 
but I still haven't seen him. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a few there. I but mean, yeah. I mean, of course, you know, John Towers uh, is Johnny Axe in uh, KSWA that does a zombie comic book uh, that, that we talked about. He, I, I understand he had a really great weekend with the book as well. Uh, I got to talk to him a few times over over, the, over our time there. Um, oh, I also know you you should have stopped me when I went by the uh, table one time. The why is that? Sorg. Why is that, sir? Because after I came back, you told me that I missed the oh, what was this? The world's strongest redneck. Oh yes. <laughs> and did he did he do something to that table? No, <laughs> at that table. World's strongest redneck. Let me let me pull this stuff up. I actually do have video, but unfortunately the sound didn't come up. Um, hold on, it should be right here in my bag. Uh, this guy was going around, and, and you know, big fellow in a red shirt. He uh, and, and he starts talking to me, and he says something about, yeah, we're actually talking about doing something with Hulk Hogan, and I'm like, okay, who's this lunatic, right? Um, this fellow, and I actually have some video that are posted by him. Um. Yeah, this is the guy. Um, so he starts talking to me, and I see he pulls something out of his bag, and I'm like, well, what, what's what's he doing there? He, he proceeds to pull a nail out of his bag and does this to it and bends it. Um, nice. So, and gives it, gives it to me. I'm like, you know, what the fuck just happened? Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he just... Uh, and we just started talking, and he and he told me he's the world's strongest redneck. He's he's got this brand. He's he's local in Pittsburgh, I believe. Uh, and he was just going around and having a good time. Here's actually, ironically, here's him on the Seven Hundred Club, and he's about to do a trick that I think he. When I spotted him later uh, uh, with uh, John Towers and some other guys that we know from the con, I pulled him aside and had to introduce him. Um, and apparently, he does a lot of stuff on YouTube, a lot of fun videos and everything. Um, and. Uh, Hold on, let's see if he does... Uh, he's going to cut cards here with his teeth, I believe. Um, what? Why is he on the 700 Club? I know, he's on the, yeah, this is the wondering. first video I found, was him on the 700 Club. <laughs> but hey, Robertson uh, loved them it's strong like he's doing eggs. magic. You would think that. You would think that. Oh, let me see if I can cue this up here. He's got, hey, he's, yeah. he's got a lot of lead up. Maybe there's a moral story to this, since he's on 700 Club. Pat Robertson doesn't know what the hell is going on right now. Uh, no, I or most it. of the time, he probably he's high as kites. Pants. All right, all right. I don't, I don't know. I'll, find, I'll try to find and cue that up. But it was, but it was the greatest thing. I think he's gonna, he's going to. Uh, he said he's going to do a booth next year. So, and and I, I wanted him to bend the uh, Batmobile. Um, so <laughs> Batmobile, the entire Batmobile, the entire Batmobile. So yeah, there, he, there he goes. I got a souvenir. <laughs> Oh, here, here he is. I guess he's uh, he just bit a he just bit a hole in the in the can, apparently. So, um, but yeah, sorry I couldn't get the video for you guys for some technical issues. But yeah, yeah, Riz, you missed it. Um, no, you should uh, you should have told me. I should have told you. I know. I know, right? Oh, and actually, there he is bending a nail right there. So there you go. So that was that was the weird that yeah. was some that was like that was Friday that was the first day um, there at the con um, and like I said a lot of wrestlers stopping by there was actually uh, one wrestler there uh, he had a booth and I I, I found it out by looking at the um, uh, the con book uh, this guy apparently used to wrestle he, he's wrestled a bit with WWE and TNA uh, he has a book uh, he goes by Brimstone. And, uh, and and he has a book out, Brimstone and uh, and the and the Border Hounds, uh, a fun little book. I, I read the first issue here. Uh, this is the first in the series of four, and they have a bunch of other books going out. They got looks like they got a video game. Uh, he was telling me about they're doing a cartoon from this. It's basically uh, from what I could tell from the first issue uh, about hell, and he's kind of like an enforcer of people that try to escape hell. Wait, 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 wait. What? So it's Spawn. Uh, no, because Spawn isn't in hell. He came back from hell. He might be in hell now. I don't know. It's been several years since I've read the comic. But, uh, but no, he, but he's like a bounty hunter for hell. Spawn. That's not Spawn. It's Spawn. You read Spawn? That's not Spawn. Spawn. That's not Spawn. Spawn. There's a lot of hell stuff out there. Spawn. 
But anyways, talk to him a little bit. Uh, you know, if we're lucky, maybe we can get him on the show here. Uh, they're apparently got a deal coming up with, I think it was HBO. They're going to do a cartoon version of this. And there's some wrestlers uh, that are involved as voice actors, like Loki, apparently. Loki's got a good voice. I, he showed, and he showed me the guy he's supposed to be uh, on one of the covers. I don't think he's on one of these I have here. Uh, but I'm like, yeah, that could be Loki. Um, so, and that's really cool. And we talked a lot about guys, you know, and them doing shit, you know, outside of wrestling and afterwards, you know, having like a side plan, like Chris Jericho, we talked to, we talked about, um, so, uh, so yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, and, and you know, not something I expected, especially at a little con like ours here in Pittsburgh, you know, um, other than that, and there was a couple wrestlers, uh, local wrestlers. Uh, I understand we're around the con, you know, including the one to stop by. Not Virgil. Not Virgil. Amazingly, not yeah. Virgil. At, excellently, not Virgil. <laughs> um, LB, I, I know you, you spent a, a couple hours over at the booth. How did things go for you? We actually didn't talk about it afterwards. Uh, hey, things went very smoothly. Uh, I sold, uh, had some good conversations with uh, with uh, fans of uh, local indie wrestling. JC Rogers stopped by when I was there as well. Uh, mm-hmm. He held up a DVD and pointed to himself and said, "Look at that handsome guy." I was like, <laughs> "Yeah, I'm gonna come." Um, <clears throat> I didn't do that, uh, but yeah, it was it was good. It's uh, it's always I wait. Always feel you like, didn't like, come, oh, or you didn't say that. Uh, either, sadly. Oh. No. Um, Everybody's sad for me. <laughs> um, yeah, I always feel really comfortable at Comic Con. It's uh, it's nice to be in that kind of nerdy element. Um, but uh, it, it got me thinking, and I, I really want to get into this and maybe write something up on it. Um, the correlation between uh, professional wrestling and comic books, especially at cons, because uh, I was I would walk around every now and then and. Um, uh, leave the booth in the capable hands of Lady Lunchbox, and uh, just peppered throughout because, of course, there's there's uh, comic book stuff and video game stuff and television stuff. But there's a lot of wrestling stuff, and it wasn't out of place at all. And then I started looking for it, and I realized it's everywhere. You know, the majority of these booths have some kind of wrestling paraphernalia, whether it's like an action figure here or a picture of Stacy Keebler there or something like that, and. It just it, it goes together so well um, that uh, I'm really curious about like the correlation of uh, you know com- comic book fans and wrestling fans, and I really want to get into it. So um, mm-hmm. that might be coming down the line. And, and, we've, seen, <laughs> uh, and we've seen it before. Uh, we've gone to New York Comic Con, and there's been several wrestlers there. Uh, I think Jerry Lawler was at the last one we were at. Was he? No. DDP was. Or didn't DDP was. Yeah. Um, we have the Steel City Con lately uh, here in Pittsburgh, which really, I, I, it really sounds like it's becoming way bigger than uh, the Pittsburgh Comic Con is. But they have it like three times a year. They always have wrestlers there. John Morrison and Molina are going to be at the one in July. Um, so I, I, there's definitely like it's a geekery thing, you know. Uh, well, there's going to be wrestling at the Sci-Fi in the Valley Con. I mean, that yeah. that's a crossover. Well, hell, you know, I guess I guess SmackDown is on Sci-Fi or Sci-Fi, however you want to go about that. Um, uh, but they're of course getting a little bit away from <laughs> what they originally were. Um, so uh, SmackDown is that. on Hishi. But, <laughs> uh, but but I think that's in, in the, the, you know well, IWC had a show at Steel City Con one year. Um, you know, trying to reach out to new fans and, 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 you know, a a bit of a turnout. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's another form of fandom, another form of geekery if you're really into wrestling. And I I think that that counts. So, um, all right. What about you, Bobby? I hope so. A DVD. (laughs) One DVD. One DVD is his contribution. Because I said it's clobbering time and the kid picked up the CM Punk DVD and bought it immediately. Nice. Nice. Oh, yeah, I helped I film that. some of the DVDs. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so we all had a part. There you go. We all had a part. Uh, so like I said, we're looking at maybe going to Sci-Fi in the Valley. We'll definitely be out uh, Steel City Con, I think, out in July. Uh, so uh, keep an eye for that. And uh, you'll come well, if you're in the Pittsburgh area here. And we're also still considering maybe going back to Baltimore uh, and see what other cons may be interested in. Uh, let us know any cons, like, more or less in the northeast or midwest areas uh, that uh, are within range of us. I, I'd love to go to C2E2 next year. 
Uh, Say we go to San Diego. I don't think we're going to be able to make San Diego with our little booth. Do it big. With our little booth, and then there's I watched Comic Con the movie big... on Saturday night. And it was awesome. What's that? I watched Comic Con the movie on Saturday night. It was awesome. All right, well, I'll ask you about that afterwards because I won't get off okay. on that tangent. Yeah, I know. Um, I'll get off. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, oh, and there's a, there's the Macho Man. Oh yeah, there was. Oh, I yeah. gotta find the picture now. The Macho Man is alive. Yes. And he's selling post movie posters. I didn't get to see because he said, "Yeah, I got a booth over there." He said he'd be by or something, but I never saw him again. At least that's that, it, it, it's just he's like in the middle row. Gigantic movie posters. Okay, okay. I think I saw like that booth when there was nobody sitting there. Yeah. Uh, and and you got a good picture with him that you're using I got as a your picture with the macho as your profile <laughs> pic. So <laughs> he had the belt. He had the he whole had the, get up. He had the glasses. He had the hat. I don't know if he had the tassels. I'm not too sure. I don't think he did much. No, no. So yeah. a good like mid '90s era Macho Man going on there. So. But it's still it, that's still a great costume. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. One of the better ones I've seen down there. Definitely. Definitely. I don't know. I saw a Lady Captain America, which was ooh ooh. Yeah, all right. that is good. Here's a lady. And then she went to the bathroom and disappeared. Yes, yes, she did. She and here's did. a picture. Here's a picture with friend of the show John Towers and uh, and uh, the world's strongest redneck. <laughs> we're all making. <laughs> we're all attempting to make muscles. So, so there you go. Great time at the Pittsburgh Comic Con. We'll be hitting more of them, of course. Uh, so, uh, and randomly, just because I found it, us high fiving a monster. High five! There you go. Hey, that's from the book release. <laughs> the Monster Haiku book release, yes. Monster Haiku book release. All right. Uh, so with <laughs> that, <laughs> what else we got here? Um, TNA. Nope. <laughs> I heard on. that. I heard that. No, 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 no. For reals. For reals. For reals, for guys. Reals? For reals. For reals. And scene. Now, uh, I I imagine nobody here watches TNA right now. Okay, uh, they have a new concept coming up uh, that they're calling Open Fight Night. This is apparently something they're going to do once a month. Um, also, there's a uh, Bischoff a fan of uh, Bischoff Appreciation Night, which has been fun because they're bleeping Bischoff since he's not allowed to use the name since he lost the pay per view. Um, but anyways, Open Fight Night. Apparently, anybody can challenge anybody else in TNA, and they can't refuse the challenge. What? It's it's oh, okay. it's open fight night. Anybody can challenge anybody else. Also, uh, Hulk Hogan, the commissioner, the GM, whatever he is, uh, will pick one champion who has to defend his title against somebody at his discretion, at uh, Hulk Hogan's discretion. Uh, last, your new TNA champion, Hulk Hogan. <laughs> <laughs> lastly, uh, as part of open fight night, they're going to incorporate. Uh, TNA gut check. Now, if you've been uh, uh, seeing, they're having these gut check events, which are basically kind of tryouts, uh, paid tryouts, mind you, uh, for TNA, um, kind of seminar tryouts kind of thing uh, with, with some of the, the, the guys there, some of the, you know, I, I don't know who all is involved with that. Uh, but Whoa. they're going to have somebody out from outside of TNA, some indie guy, Um and they will uh, bring them in and have a match, and there will be, I guess there's a panel of three judges, and they will critique him on impact. Well, it's like The Voice, but with wrestling. Yeah, so it's kind of a <laughs> reality reality show aspect to it, and they might sign some of these guys. Why is hasn't WWE idea. thought of this? I And it's really, I think it's kind of a novel concept. They now did. They called it Tough Enough, <laughs> and then nobody watched it, because who the fuck is Andy Levine? <laughs> <laughs> what do you want from me? <laughs> I'm going to win the show. Oh, they're going to fire me. Um, but I think, this is, wrestling ring. <laughs> I think this is a pretty decent idea here, you know? It's, oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> wait a minute. Somebody's yelling in the Google bang out behind me, I notice. <laughs> What what's going on? <laughs> I saw it's just a huge reaction back there from uh from John there. <laughs> Do you have anything to add to that? Add no, it's just I loved I loved his uh commentary. Okay. <laughs> it's the singing, isn't it? This is why we sing. Exactly. There you go. All right. Um but no, but I think it's an interesting concept. Again, let's see if they because I mean I really enjoyed the idea of the point system that they had before. 
<laughs> like a year ago that just fell out after two months. And they say they're going to do this monthly. Let's see what they do. Let's see if they can sustain something like this, you know? What do you want from me? <laughs> That's stuck in my head now. Thanks. So Is that the, that should That's, be the theme for Open me. Fight Night, maybe? Open Fight. Dumb. Let me tell you about Open Fight Night. Okay. okay. So anybody can challenge anybody, and they have to accept the challenge. That's great. The entire roster will now challenge for the TNA Heavyweight Championship. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> It just said it's for fighting. It didn't say it was for championships. I mean, there's going to be other stuff. People in feuds are going to be like, hey, I'm, you're going to stop avoiding me. I mean, it's all going to be used for storyline aspects, but I think it's still interesting. They could do some 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 different stuff with this. Everybody's going to challenge Dixie Carter to a match. <laughs> yeah. Or Surge. Surge. <laughs> Apparently, hey, well, I, I, come on. We, we pretty much established Surge as a non-threat to any man out there. Um... You can get exactly. beat up a couple of times already, mm-hmm. but I don't know. I and I'm looking forward to it. So, what do you want from me? Uh, somebody who's not looking forward to it is uh, one Scott Steiner, who has been uh, amazingly vocal on Twitter. He's been on because fire. giving him awesome. a giving him a digital a digital microphone is as great as giving him a real microphone. Uh, re- friends over there at WrestleZone.com has a few of his tweets up. Uh, including, including open fight night makes TNA look so bush league. So an indie wrestler who nobody knows or cares about, obviously this is more than one tweet. Nobody knows or cares about demand a title, uh, way to devalue the world title. Uh, so world title holders have to stand backstage like jabronis and an indie wrestler can call them out. Uh, way to break down the pecking order, dumbass. So I don't know what happened because last I knew T- uh, uh, Scott Steiner was doing a great job with uh, Rinka King. And uh, now he's just... Oh, he got geez. fired. Oh, did he, uh, did he they straight shit, up get fired? They shit all they, over they, him. They were like, fuck you, Scott Steiner. Yeah. Okay. He's still, on the, he's still on the billboards and everything, but he, he's gone. Okay, those are all pre-taped from months ago, I'm sure. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, Scott Steiner is all, what do you want from me? <laughs> <laughs> Jeff yes. Hardy's going to battle addiction. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to call and it out first. He will lose. Matt's going to just battle a cheesecake <laughs> match and to a battle a chicken sandwich <laughs> an apple pie strap match <laughs> <laughs> wow alright um, what else is going on out there uh, vegans the only bride uh, should wow. we talk about it what's that should we just talk about the, the this guy <laughs> Should Hulk Hogan talk and about, his yeah, yeah we, I guess we've been avoiding it all night, haven't we? Virgil just shows up in the corner and sets a table up. I think he did. <laughs> that, the, the grainy little image in the back is probably him sitting at a table. We can kind of show Hogan these because these, so these pictures yeah, don't you show can't anything. Really see anything. I, I gotta find them now. Except for the, the, the last one. Okay. The last one is just him. So sad. <laughs> Yeah, that's because Virgil walked so in and in the table. Oh, yeah. well, first of all, how many? Raise your hand if you. This will be great for audio. Raise your hand if you clicked the link and saw the pictures. I'm raising my hand. I have not hand. seen them yet. I have not okay. either. I don't okay. want to. I haven't. I have. I've been at work all day. I'm the yeah, only. No, this is from like yesterday or the day before, I think. <laughs> yeah, it, it leaked yesterday. Leaked. And leaked. Leaked. Yeah. I'm making air quotes. Hey, I want to also audio notice listeners. listeners. Thanks. Thanks to I. I I'm sure. Oh, the, and. And it's rumored. Sorry, Sorg, I didn't mean to cut you Go off ahead. here. But it is being rumored that the lady in the video. Remember Bubba, Bubba the Love, Love Sponge? Yeah. It's That's Bubba? his ex girlfriend. Oh. oh no. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Good job. Man. What do you want from me? <laughs> <laughs> So is, there's there's no wow. shots of his actual uh, uh, Hulkamania. No, you can't see a damn thing. Oh, that it's sucks. In, it's in the NWO style. It Black. kind of is too. So I'm 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 picturing it right now. The video is going to have that NW, yeah that music in the background. If you thought creepy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the hand signals coming from Google Hangout are amazing. Um, 
Um, if- so if it's if it's in the NWO style, it goes way too long and uh, hominate. <laughs> Hominate. Hogan just lays on top of her the whole time and refuses to let her get over. <laughs> yep. And then there's going to be a red one and then a Latino one. And then they're all going to combine again and then break off again and then come back again until it's all stupid. And it's all tie dye or something. I don't even know. Yeah, that goes weird. I can't find it. Man. I can't. I can't wait for the Hulk Hogan porn porn parody uh, which is just going to be the Blue World Order. Ooh. Ooh. We're coming over. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, yeah. Yeah, Blue Meanie dance with no pants. <laughs> <laughs> just, a, just a straight cameo of Blue Meanie <laughs> just dancing. <laughs> no, just, just, I do not want to add... Fucking, just two people fucking a Blue Meanie in the background <laughs> doing his thing. Just dancing. <laughs> Uh, holy shit why is it that this porn is just so much material (laughs) just endless material it writes itself it does it does it really does the jokes are there we Uh, just have to bring them up yeah yeah that's something that hulk hogan can't get (laughs) <laughs> Jesus. It looks so sad and I wish I could find these 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 pictures. I can't believe I just said that. Um just go go on uh four one one mania dot com slash wrestling. <laughs> plug plug, I guess. So, yeah, that's where I get my wrestling news now. That and wrestling observer. Yeah, I can't do uh pro wrestling dot net anymore because the uh this this the I realize how much uh malware and crap is on there. <laughs> Oh, dude, I used to go to nodq.com, and I had to fucking, as soon as I got to the website, it was an ordeal, because I'd have to use immediately the Flash Killer extension, wipe out all the Flash ads. Second, I never, I could, I could never click on anything on the website. If I wanted to read something, I had to right-click and open a new window, and then immediately jump over that window and Flash Kill everything that's in there, and still not actually click on everything. Yeah, and that was the thing because I'm on a I'm on a Mac and I'm, I'm on Chrome and I have a uh, a uh, an ad killer kind of thing going on. And I didn't realize how much was on there, and I brought it up on a Windows machine. and And I've been sending links on the Mayhem Show account, and now I feel bad for doing that because I was sending people this horrible, horrible website. Um, it, it WrestleZone, I, I tested it. It seems like it's not nearly as bad. Uh, I need to like stop by it like every once in a while and see if like it added a really bad ad. Uh, system ever since, but actually, four hundred one mania looks really clean. Four hundred one is a good site. I use it for wrestling news and uh, also a lot of movie news too. Their movie mm-hmm. sections pretty. You good. got a lot of stuff. I used to I used to read from them a little bit, um, but I think like there it, it seemed like it was too vanilla at the time of news. I a, so I got a Lords of Pain dot net, but make sure you go to dot net. <laughs> oh man dot net yeah and he actually i i could show these pictures but i don't think i don't even think you can see anything on the video um they're so i want to so see his dog uh yeah but <laughs> he's like so sad i want to see his dog pull it out hogan wow damn it hogan just lay down Oh, <laughs> see what I did there. Oh, uh, <laughs> let's see the two. What was it called? The two fingers of doom. Was that it? <laughs> it is now. Or the finger, the finger poke of doom, right up. Uh, it's the not hot. Hole. Ow. <laughs> yeah, massage that prostate, brother. <laughs> oh. All right. Uh, can, we, can we please call the show that? <laughs> <laughs> what massage the prostate further? Massage that prostate, brother. Oh. All right, I think it's time. But we, I'm sure. Oh no! I'm sure there's stuff going on. Oh uh, no! I'm opening up the hangout, guys. Uh, if you have any commentary for what we've been talking about tonight, <laughs> or if there's anything you want to bring up news-wise, this is the time to let us know. <laughs> can you? Can you even look? Can you even instantly look at that wrestle buddy anymore, Riz? I mean, really, because all that all that wrestle buddy stands for at this point is dirty, look, dirty old man sex, dirty old man sex, eyes, and disappointment. 
Look him in his eyes. Look at his eye. old man balls. <laughs> <laughs> what you gonna do, brother, when the wrestling buddy comes after you? <laughs> wow, who was that? That was an awesome Hulk Hogan. That was really good. <laughs> that would be me over here. New guy, John Fun. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Mr. Awesome. Mustachio comes through <laughs> with the is. awesome Hogan. Got, he's uh, yeah, shit, as, yeah. as this video is telling me, it's at John Fun, J O N Fun, uh, for you guys on audio. Yes. So, uh, the, 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 or first plug, plug anything you want. I'll give you a floor here. Uh, <laughs> plug anything. Um, I guess I'll plug myself as I'm probably networking in with you all. I go to uh, a lot of indie shows down here in, out of Charleston, West Virginia. Oh. About a th uh, five hour drive if I ever come up to see you all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to Covey Pro this weekend. I'm going to a benefit show tomorrow night. So I'm always in wrestling. I've done, uh, been in wrestling since 1998, and there's my synopsis. So that's me. Just look me up under John Fun on Google. <laughs> excellent, excellent. I, you know, actually, in a, um, uh, AJ from the show that we had the video on earlier, he is actually in the process of moving down to Flair Country uh, down your way. So, uh, so we're getting a little bit, we're getting more hooks down that way. Um, excellent. So <laughs> you have any commentary from tonight or anything else you want to bring up from uh, from wrestling news for the week? Andy Levon who? <laughs> uh. <laughs> I mean, that's basically it. I mean, you, you, you wonder how many people, I mean, the ratings for Tough Enough weren't bad, right? I mean, people watch that, right? No. I, 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 did. I vaguely remember. I, I, I mean, I remember it being a pretty good show and people were into it. Um, I don't remember anybody saying, OK, this is a failure. You know, uh, I, I hope they do another one, to be honest. So, well, I think once I they actually do one like a lot closer together. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I guess they're like, OK, well, not that we screwed up with this Andy, dude. Let's figure out. Let's see. We can pick up. Maybe a Ryan Mitchell. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess I, had I will go. punch you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I had to do it. I, I will to commit it. a hate crime. Oh. <laughs> did you Did you guys see the picture that Matt Cross put on his Facebook? No, no. Okay. What's that? He said uh, he's gonna he's bound and determined to get to WWE, and he was like all bloody and look look actually kind of like intimidating. I was so. gonna say. You, you get rid of Matt Cross because he couldn't tell you why he wanted to be. He's tough enough, but you keep this giant wuss. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. it got down to two guys, and, and and I don't know what happened to the other guy. What happened to the runner up for uh, for? Yeah, he was good. He's addicted enough. to coke. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> some lady chance. died from Coca Cola abuse. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, here you go. Here you go. There's one. Here's one he's got here. It says, no more fucking around WWE or bust uh, going yeah, on this page. A, he shouldn't have been eliminated. What no, the no, fuck? No, no. There was, there was some kind of... Cut his nipple off? Is that what that was? I, I, it looks like maybe it was a bunch of chops or something like that. So, I think once he was eliminated... That's when that's it failed. When nobody cared about... <laughs> he lost credibility in the world. No, honestly, yeah. yeah. Cause, that was it. Because every wrestler watched Tough Enough... Because they have worked with Matt Cross, mm -hmm. so when he's he was gone, there's no reason to watch it anymore. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. No, seriously, does Matt Cross really need to tell you why he wants to be in WWE? No. Mm -mm. I mean, I mean the dude time, has an I indie ability. The 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 guy has an indie resume that's longer than Hogan's dick. Well, the the problem is when you go to <laughs> WWE, that doesn't that's mean anything. Not, you know? Well, wait. It's not really a wow, thing. I just... By the way, <laughs> Matt Cross, you can use that as a catchphrase. Please do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Matt but, um, Cross. For free. Yeah. I mean, you can tell the guy The guy played it safe. He didn't want to step on any toes or anything like that when really he should have just been being Matt, Matt Cross. Cross. He should have been Matt Cross. He played it too safe. And that's what got him. And they tried to send a message. They said, don't pussyfoot around. You know? Uh, unfortunately, they let go probably the best prospect they had in the, in the long run. Uh, but could you, you know. imagine Daniel Bryan, CM Punk, Matt Cross three way? My what would they God. do? With, what would they do? They have to do that for Raw and SmackDown every week just to keep the fans up. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, exactly. All those guys with Colt Cabana in a stable. 
Oh man! Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Let's throw, let's just guys, you know, just sign Johnny Gargano for good measure with that t- that team up. All right, let's just somebody sign Johnny Gargano. You know, as much as not that I don't want him to go away from the locals, but um, but he, he fucking deserves it, man. Um, but I don't know. <laughs> In a weird way, you gotta you gotta sit there and think about this. Is like is Vince sitting there looking at the thing going? All right, I got Punk. I got this uh, Chris Hero guy, Claudio guy. Hmm, Daniel Bryan. Hmm, we should have kept that Matt Cross dude. I don't know. <laughs> I, you know, I, you got to think Vince that has no uh, perspective of what's going on in the Indies. I mean, guy doesn't have time. You know, I mean, he's too busy no. running a multi billion dollar well, company. So I mean, there's well, no perspective. That's why he has scouts. That's why he has a I, talent coordinator. He, Sorry, he, what, go ahead. He, he has scouts. I've been to one of the private uh, tryouts about a year or two ago, and mm-hmm. it was right before they did the Tough Enough thing. And um, one of the big guys around here used to work as an agent, Danny Ray. Mm-hmm. And he had Jamie Noble come down. He had a lot of guys like um, Chance Prophet, mm-hmm. Onyx, um, who, uh, J- Jason uh, the Gift Kincaid. A lot of guys trot out. And I, I was just I was just there in attendance and blessed to be there, uh, and and watch what kind of criteria they go through. They want the perfect wrestling match. It's it's ridiculous how meticulous they are to get people into the WWE. I think, like you said, Vince is, has this this idealized picture of wrestling. Exactly, exactly. He wants well, and it's different because it is wrestling for TV. If you go to a live WWE event like a Raw or something, it does feel like the matches are slower, no matter what they come across on on TV. Nothing really feels fast in WWE Live. I mean, really, um, you're not going to see an ROH style match because that that comes off differently on television. And it's not what they want to present. Um, all those guys go down to FCW, and now there's word that they're going to be starting a finishing school when they're about to come on TV up in Stanford, Connecticut, as like a stopgap <laughs> between, I think that's what NXT was, about like a stopgap between FCW and actually being on television for the WWE. Um, but those guys are going down there. Guys like Claudio, guys like Hero, guys like Punk, they're going down to FCW, and they're basically having to relearn how to wrestle the WWE way. And the, these guys have said that like several times. You, you've heard it in some of the interviews on the DVDs, I think, even. Um, these guys are seriously like, no, it's different. You, it doesn't matter. You know, you 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 cut your your teeth on all these indie fans and everything, but you do have to change what that style is. <coughs> Excuse me. You know, much less like these go, guys go over and have to deal with a different style in Japan or Mexico or whatever. It is that's it, completely different style well, with WWE, and it's how adaptable you are and do you fit within that system. Go ahead, Josh. Uh, okay. Well, you bring up that point. Well, wouldn't that tell WWE that maybe it's time to change things up a bit? Uh, not when they're still like the biggest company. The only no, the only way that, that somebody like T- uh, WWE is going to be big enough is, is if a TNA or ROH becomes the WCW of the late nineties and becomes a change. Because if they're going to have to retrain every single wrestler they're hiring now <laughs> because of the way they wrestled in these other feds. Then they're they're the ones that need to adapt. No, that's why they have their own training school in Florida. No bullshit. That trains them this way. No, no. It, 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 it doesn't work. It it is working because people are showing up to all the shows and pe- they're making for money. now. For now, you see a big dip in that. If you see, a, you're on the verge of losing I, all these big wrestlers that got them through that through point. When did WWE change? When was the last time WWE made a major shift in how they did things? Two thousand. No 2000? Blood. Yeah, end of the uh, the raw, uh, the attitude error. What was their big shift? PG. They haven't, they've only been PG since like the late 2000s. Fine. No, it doesn't big... matter. Listen, if they're gonna, they're gonna, hold on one second. <laughs> Can I cut in with some what quick breaking want? news? Go yeah. ahead, LB. Um, uh, Buff Bagwell was in a, uh, very severe car accident. Um, it's been reported it happened last night, not earlier today. His Jeep flipped over eight or nine times uh, and it left him with a broken neck and, uh, reports say that his jaw has been wired shut and will be that way for about six months. Wow. Jeez. Mm. So positive thoughts to, uh, to Buff Bagwell. Damn. Definitely. Definitely. 
Yeah. WWE is having to go out to re-sign guys that were part of the company before in order to continue their style. Mm-hmm. Fair example, Brock well, Lesnar. In order to reap the benefits from what they built before. Right, because the wrestlers they have now aren't able to fit that bill. Mm-hmm. I, you're looking at guys like Chris Jericho. You're looking at guys like Lord Tensai, Brock Lesnar. All these guys that they brought in under the old school WWE model. Mm-hmm. And now you have to add in... Uh, Daniel Bryans, CM Punk, uh, Evan Bourne, Kofi Kingston. These are guys that don't fit the WWE hard knock, you're going to do shit our way school. But they know they've adapted. They've adapted. They've adapted a lot. They've adapted a lot. Look at a CM Punk. Watch that CM Punk. They have adapted a lot, but Mm -hmm. it's not as good as the shit they were doing before. Well. No, go ahead. Try it. Well, he does have a point. Well, of course, way, no, it's not as... It. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, uh, wheels first there. Go ahead. Okay. If you think about it, Chachi, the CM Punk, Daniel Bryan matches, they did, what, two weeks in a row because that was their style of wrestling that they enjoyed, and WWE let them do it. Yeah. They right. They recognize that. They recognize it was that. twice. Yeah. And that could be a placeholder that they may come back to that later. We've we've seen that. They'll dabble in something and they'll come back to they it. They can't carry it with two guys. Well, no, no. Um, LB, I think you had something to say there? Yeah, uh, of course it's not. It's I'm not going to say it's better, it's worse. It's different. And a lot of the reason WWE has the style that they do and they make their guys adapt to that style is because uh, when wrestlers are out on the road and they're wrestling at any random indie promotion, they're going to go balls to the wall 24-7 and um, they're going to do whatever they want. And if they get injured, they get injured, whatever that's on their head, not the head of a larger company. Um, WWE with this like slower, kind of more mellow style, it protects their investment of their wrestlers. Um and uh, it it kind of I think it helps with the presentation for that to have that similarities. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? It's like uh, the, like two sides of a coin, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I mean, we, we got to think about the schedule too. Because I mean, they're they're, they're wrestling four that or five was the times other thing, a night. Schedule. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because versus if you're in the indies, you're wrestling hopefully three times a week. You know, three three times a week at most. At mm-hmm. most three times a week, you know, uh, more often than not a, a weekend, you know, you're, you, we, you wrestle on the weekends and, or maybe twice on the weekends or something like that. Mm-hmm. Whereas WWE, it's almost every fucking you night. Really, you, you really do have to slow down. You see guys like, like Samoa Joe and Ray Mysterio slowing down as they go, because I mean, they got to do that to make sure their, their career lasts. And WWE, I think kind of teaches that to a point to make sure that their guys don't break down as easily doing stupid stuff, you know? Uh, you know, I don't know what happened with the Matt Har- or Jeff Hardy, but other than that, um, you know, and even him, he probably would have done a lot more if it wasn't for any, any, some kind of prodding in the back, I bet. You know, I mean, this is all speculation. This is from what we see and we observe and everything. And we know it's a different product, you know. I mean, Ring of Honor really is kind of slowed down lately as far as, like, what, at least from what you see on their TV and everything the last few years, you know. Um, it, it's a different kind of show than it was, uh, where it was like, yeah, you know, I remember going to the, the Hammerstein for one of those end of the year shows and it was like hard hitting and fast and, 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 and didn't stop all night. And, uh, and, and it really doesn't seem like they're pushing that aspect anymore. They're more kind of, um, um, flattening out or, 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 or becoming, trying to become more mainstream. So they're more acceptable because not everybody's going to be into that. I mean, Here's something to think about, maybe. I was sitting there just thinking about what Chachi said. He's right, in a way. And I hate to mention, like, uh, like Brian Mitchell. You <laughs> son of a but, bitch. <laughs> but I think you might agree with this one, Chachi. I don't know. I'm not sure. But look at the match we saw this weekend of Brian Mitchell and Edmonds. Two months in a row, that was one of my favorite matches. Uh-huh. I think I think but best match from themselves. I think best match on both cards, and there was a ladder match on the other card. Right, I can plug that one. <laughs> <laughs> I can definitely plug that one because Edmonds is down here in um, SPW and a few other organizations, and he had a great, awesome match with uh, Lodi out of SPW for the uh, for the inaugural championship 
and their rematch is scheduled uh like May 29th something like Memorial Day weekend and it should be ridiculously awesome down there. But mm-hmm. yeah, Edmonds awesome. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, Thorpe will tell you, I mean, I, I haven't seen him like down where you're at, John, but it's like It's all right. The fans hate him up here so much. He's doing such a great job. I mean, he has that persona that could get him into the Fed. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, very much so. I agree totally with you on that, uh, especially uh, when he introduced um, his uh, current girlfriend into it. I mean, she's not much of an added uh, figure there, but she still uh, gives you that she gives you that dynamic of he's just a giant prick mm-hmm. and will mm-hmm. always be that prick. <laughs> but he's, he's he brings such a great um, persona to the ring. And, uh, yeah, I like the hand gestures. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. That, that's fine. That happens on this show. We um, get our fans coming together. <laughs> oh. Making connections. Group hug. You know, I'm trying to find a... Yeah, it, it, it is one of those interesting things of the Edmonds, uh, Shane Taylor's, Joseph Brooks. Joseph mm-hmm. Brooks is another great yeah, there, to see. Yeah, there you go. I mean... When I first met the guy, he, he reminded me a lot of Pillman, mm-hmm. and I still joke with him about it. But, I mean, he's a great talent in his own right. Jimmy Nuts. Uh, I mention a lot of the guys because I know they go down your way, too, to wrestle. So, yeah. I mean, Sword could tell you he's had a few ma- favorite matches of certain guys, and we just talk about it after shows, and it's great. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He, he wrestled... Um, Ryan, uh, how last fall at our, uh, we had a, a booking for, uh, a quote unquote, uh, Mexican themed, uh, wrestling at the, um, Lucha Libre's type wrestling at a, uh, festival in Charleston. And that we got, we were able to get Ryan how, uh, skid marks, which links back to tough enough <laughs> quote skid marks, uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm bringing it back to air quotes, guys. Air quotes, skin marks. Uh, but they had a uh, – it was one of the better matches because those two guys could go all night long. Uh, they, could, they, they, they could just they, – they know how to really put together solid matches. And, mm-hmm. and that's one of the things on top of the persona. They know how to put together the work rate. And you hear work rate, you love – you got to get – see it mm-hmm. exactly exactly um hey real quick uh because i know i know i heard about a couple of these promotions from a couple different people over the weekend uh can you give us websites for uh like uh the couple of feds that you mentioned that from down your way i can i can hook you up with every every single one i believe uh xmcw which is the one i uh frequent the most which is actually cutting back right now because the owner left for florida for an actual job so it's not running as much 304 wrestling which i just am mentioning now uh they bring in every they're actually having matt hardy come in uh asw wrestling's having matt hardy come in so two promotions are having matt hardy come in in t- over a two-month span uh kobe pro spw uh i mean there's like six or seven eight promotions down here problem is I'm in Charleston, and you still have to drive two to three hours to get to every promotion. <laughs> I, I don't, so if you have something local like you all up in Pittsburgh, yeah, go to it. Support it because it's you never know who you might see. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, but I'll, yeah. I'll drop links. Uh, I don't know wherever you want me to drop links to you uh, there, uh, Mr. There's, sure, there's sure. one of the – that's not the most updated site, but there's a um, – got the Facebook page. Uh Facebook.com slash four at number four XMCW. There's 304 Wrestling. Uh, we've got the big show coming up in July. I know the indie minute was earlier, but since you got me at the back half of the show, no Barry. Problem, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hey, we'll have to, we'll have to shoot these over to AJ. Well, he'll listen to the show. No, oh, yeah. there's a lot of wrestling down in his way. Uh, stuff I found so far, real quick. Uh, XMCW.IndieWrestlers.net. Uh, like I said, it might be out of date. 304Wrestling.com and uh, ASWWrestlingWV.com. So the, go check that out. The What's first that? time you had that on the screen, I just happened to glance up. I wasn't really paying attention, and I thought it said Ass, ass, ass Wrestling Live. <laughs> um, <laughs> ASL Wrestling. Uh, yeah. <laughs> website, Thanks, that would be something you would watch. <laughs> or, uh, I just, I, I just happened to glance out, up at the screen <laughs> after checking my phone, and I'm just like ass, ass wrestling. Ass, 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 ass. <laughs> That's what Hulk Hogan was doing. <laughs> well, we know what Chachi wants to do. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, no, thanks a lot. We, we're always looking for a different promotion to see what's no. going on in different segments of the nation, you know. Uh, so we, we, please uh, email me those uh, those those sites uh, to the yes, Good sure. Times email. Uh, most of us will get it from that. Uh, Russell fan, I'm sure, will put it in his circulation. And, and let us know if there's anything big coming up so we can uh, definitely earmark it for the Indie Minute. So. Um, with that, I think it's time for us now to wrap up. we have 800 up. more feds we yes, can we do. for. Yes, we do! It's another whole section of the country we've never looked oh, at before. Uh, I love it. It's going to turn into its own spin-off podcast at some point here, guys. It might. It I, might. I, I want know. nothing to One do with day. it. Oh, no, you're definitely not having anything to do with that. That's, yeah, that's your piss break or something. Russell fans talk about Indie Wrestling. There they you have, go. They have internet down there. <laughs> I'm all for it. Every any idea you have, I'm all for it. That's the way I work. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Uh, well, go check out Twitter, John Fun. Uh, Wheels is up there in the uh, in the uh, hangout as well. You're you're uh, blocked by the uh, WMS logo. <laughs> he's he's down there below the logo. <laughs> uh, that is. Hot Wheels RWA on Twitter. Check out RWA Live where he is uh, involved, sir. Uh, Bobby yep. FJ Town is Bobby FJ Town. Uh. The hologram on Twitter. Uh, also, Riz okay. IUP. Joshy, what did you learn from wrestling this week? What did I learn from wrestling this week? Hey, wait a minute. I thought we were doing plugs. Shut plugs. up. <laughs> nope. That, that ended nope. apparently. Shut up. DJ Lunchbox. What the fuck? MonsterHaiku.org. Thoughtfulriot.com. And uh, in a few weeks, I'll be having dinner with uh, George Clooney and President Obama. Okay. Nice. Joshy. AnswerCoinToBegin.com. What did you learn from wrestling this week? Uh, uh, answer, 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 I learned that no matter how hard I try, I cannot miss a Brock Lesnar John Cena segment. You did try. You did we, try. Uh, Sorg and I had to miss the beginning of Raw last night to go pick up some equipment from Bo Diggity. And, uh, I, and I was like, I was all for it because... I was like, eh, it's going to be the first hour. They they already dedicated that to the John Cena Brock Lesnar contract signing. I'm like, I'll be fine. I won't have to see any of it. <laughs> Wrong. It was the very last thing I had to sit through on Raw last night. So, no matter how hard I try, I will always be defeated by a John Cena horribly spoken Brock Lesnar contract <laughs> signing. Bring back Heyman. Bring back Heyman, <laughs> just for him. DJ I will Lunch. not leave until all these demands are made that I just made out loud in my mouth hole from this piece of paper. Oh, whatever, he's from Minnesota. And I'm DJ Lunchbox. That you feel that I'm feeling yeah. something. <laughs> What'd you learn, sir? I learned that Josh Matthews is just trying to do his job. Seriously? <laughs> Seriously? Wow. Well, you know what? No, no, don't chain make fun. Chain link fans thrown through a chain link fence will don't fuck up your life don't, if you're Josh no. Matthews. Don't make fun of Josh Matthews. We I all go us. through this Josh every Matthews. day. We're supporting Josh Matthews. We go through this Josh every Matthews. day. <laughs> wait, what are, wait you go Matthews. through a chain link fence every day? Well, yeah, kind of. <laughs> kind of. I get people getting mad at chain, me when I'm just trying to do my job. Figuratively. Yeah. So you're saying that John Ma Josh Matthews, John Matthews, Josh Matthews' experience, <laughs> John Madden, John Madden's experience on Raw this week is a. a Are you gonna break out the Telestrator? Try some circles. <laughs> oh, if I had Telestrator technology, I tell you what, it, yeah, Rob would probably just be hey. drawing penises on Awesome Cast all night. Yep. Um, balls too. I don't know where I was going with that. Let's go to Riz. Riz, what Wait. did you learn from wrestling? Well, first from. My experience at Comic Con, I learned that I'm never drinking fuse again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what happened there? I got, oh my tweets. god! I never drank fuse before in my life. Yeah, 
<laughs> and then I, I didn't finish the bottle. Was it free? But I was yes. Okay. But it I I was like jittery all day. <laughs> what kind did you rest have? Of the day. Which one did you have? The banana That's the best one! The banana coconut one? Banana coconut. Yeah, there's it's like nothing in that. It's all natural shit, right? Did Are they, you also do that? some coke? <laughs> Are they energy no, yeah, drinks? I did coke. No, it's no. Not energy drink. They're supposed to be like all natural. Oh. Like, I mean, the only oh, thing I worry about is like this Slender Eye stuff that probably has like some kind of sugar additive you replacement. Know what? Vitamins that, and shit in that stuff. Yeah. I'm pretty so. sure that Macho Man slipped him some Coke. That might be. I think, I think, I think he did slip me some Because you we were saying how you were like warm and couldn't cool yeah. down. <laughs> I'm so warm. I, I was at work too. I was like, what the fuck's Maybe going on? Maybe you just blew a fuse. Ah. All right. Oh. Oh, right. Did you have anything from wrestling, sir? From wrestling, I learned that CM Punk knew Josh Matthews was going to get hurt. So he just gave him a ba- bottle. He just gave him the whole ba- <laughs> was... basket of Jack Daniels. It did go from his greatest night ever to the worst night ever for Josh <laughs> Matthews. <laughs> this is the Josh Matthews Appreciation Hour. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Bobby, uh, Bobby F. Hologram. I learned that uh, CM Punk had one of his best promos ever last night again. That was amazing. Yes, it was. Yeah, it that was. was fun. That was, fun. That was amazing. And but... Can, Why does everybody get Paul Bear the cold shoulder? <laughs> <laughs> I saw what you did there, Bobby. <laughs> I'll be. Okay, that's it. Can someone can someone explain to me why? Okay, so he comes out and he acts drunk. Oh, it was a very good, very good job at acting drunk. And then the cops are like, "That motherfucker is drunk." <laughs> and then they leave, and he's like, "Nope, not drunk. I fooled the cops." What did that prove? Seriously, <laughs> he got a shot at Jericho. Just fuck with the cops. No, it was to give him a shot at Jericho. Yeah. He, no, he, still, he still messed up the alphabet backwards. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah, he did. Did he really? really yeah, he really put, he put be SB14. Like, oh, close enough. I, want, I wanted him to go to Jericho and be like, you say the alphabet backwards, you sober motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That, speaking of motherfucker, did they tr- on my feed, they tried to bleep out WWF. Did they, uh, yeah, did they yeah, get they, that on here? That's what it sounds like. like. It's happened here. Yeah, yeah. And I, heard, I heard after the show, he said it three more times. He's huh. called it WWF Universe three more times. Who? <laughs> Punk. What, like, all, all... <laughs> all right. Was drunk. From the Hangout, uh, first, John, since you're up there, you learned anything from wrestling this week? Uh, I just learned that you just did a great Mike Adam Lee impression. <laughs> uh, nothing major. Not, not yet. Uh, other, than it, other than there is a difference between sports entertainment and wrestling. Okay. <laughs> Wheels, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Oh, what did I learn from wrestling this week? That hasn't already been taken. Because <laughs> honestly, I totally you can repeat the something. Thing. I mean, Schrodinger, also loved off. You already won an award. Get out of here. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. The best thing I really love is the camera guy who should have been Chachi because he did a great shot of the line in the ring that was not straight. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is something Chachi would have done. <laughs> hey, you walk a straight line. That's not a straight line. <laughs> I, I would like to uh, point out that, <laughs> that this weekend I, uh, I noticed something. Hmm. That... The wrestlers in RWA of a certain type will use the same entrance music. <laughs> mm-hmm. Did you notice that, Wheels? No. Uh, the two black wrestlers in RWA <laughs> both came out to uh, My President is Black. Not the only two, but... Well, the two that were there that night. There's three. Three. Oh, All right, there was the big one. I, how did I forget the big one? <laughs> I forgot Shane Taylor. How Shane the fuck, Taylor? How the fuck did I forget Shane Taylor? Anyways, so there's that. Uh, I'm telling yeah. him, you forgot him. <laughs> That's fine. Wow. I'll give him a sandwich. Okay. Or two. Sorg. Sorg. Yes. Sorg. Sorg. What'd you Sorg. learn in wrestling this week? Sorg. Sorg. 
Sword, 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 I don't know, is that as much I learned, but it was more of a question I had developed this week. Uh, no. For because I mean, we, you, as you saw at, at the at the shoot, uh, there was the first black president of wrestling. Yes. Uh, uh, Lamont Williams. Which a second question comes up, which is who's the second black president of wrestling? Um, but the first one is <laughs> guy, who right elected here. him? <laughs> it's an elected position. Who elected him? Uh, or did he did he just vote for himself? Wait, wait. I think I could answer that for you. Is it? Yeah. Let's see. It wasn't a fan of Pennsylvania. Because he's from Ohio. Oh. So we blame it on the Ohio fans. There you go. There you go. I voted for him. They just make stuff up over there. All right, guys. It's Wrestling Mayhem Show. WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Tweet us at Mayhem Show. Tag this one. Hashtag WMS318 for any commentary out there. Uh, check us us. Check us out on Facebook. Check out the open group there. Circle in the Google Plus. The Wrestling Mayhem Show will circle you back. And you can hop in uh, like these guys have uh, all night in the Hangout. Make funny faces. Make hand gestures and, uh, and and join us here late in the show. Um, and uh, what else we got? Oh yeah, email. you can email us at good times. Good times. Good times. Uh, good times I did it. The uh, Drop a drop a the phone line a hotline at four one two two zero six WMS zero nine six seven zero and uh, go by the app WMS Gold on your uh, Amazon App Store and iTunes App Store. Thanks, guys, for everybody joining us. Glad you guys enjoyed us. Hope uh, hello to all the new listeners from Pittsburgh Comic Con. We'll see you guys next week. Mayhem out. Peace, ninjas. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait.